Hmm. Any, how's everything going? Good. Midterm time. Mm -hmm. I can tell by the enthusiasm in your face that you're looking forward to our midterm. So the midterm is on the 19th. That's uh, two weeks from Thursday. Um, it will cover, in the, and this is all in the syllabus, it will cover chapters one through nine in the book. Chapters one through nine and chapter 22 in the book. And so chapter 22 is ethics. One through nine is basically the things we've, we've covered. Um, they will cover the lectures through. So what I'll do is I'll lecture this week and lecture next week. And then the following Tuesday, that's the 15th, do a review session. And then the test is on the, you know, 17th, I'll do the review session, the Tuesday, and then the test is on the 19th. Um, the format of the test is that there'll be two parts to it. So one part will be short answers, um, which I'll, you know, a lot of that will be like, I'll give you like a little scenario and then ask you to identify independent variables, dependent variables, um, and then, uh, you know, ask about different designs of studies. So I might say, you know, tell me how you would do this if you were to do an experimental design or randomized control trial design. Tell me how you might do it in a cross-sectional design. And we're going to talk about designs today. So, and so you've been through, um, and I'll also ask about sampling. So, you know, the main things that we've covered that I've tried to drill home to use is sampling, independent variables, dependent variables, um, and then we'll do research designs today. And then the other thing is just sort of the, you know, how kind of science works in terms of hypothesis testing and things like that. Um, the uh, the second part of the of the exam will be I'll give you a journal article and then ask you questions about the journal article. So this will be similar to what you've done in, in assignments so far. Um, so you know I'll ask you to pick out independent variables, dependent variables, things like that, and I'll ask you questions about it. Um, the I'll give you the the article uh, next week, and so it gives you you know basically you know, almost two weeks or ten days to go through and to read it, um, and then what. Then for the exam, uh, then you know, all you do is that you just kind of, you come into the exam and it's so no online, just in, in person. Um, you don't need to bring any calculator. There'll be no kind of you know, math type things. Uh, and then I'll give you a fresh copy of the article and the exam. So and then you'll be ready to go from there. Any questions? Okay, well, so next week then I'll go through and I'll, you know, so it's studying for the exam. What I do is, is, you know, go through the lecture notes carefully. So, you know, the, um, if there's topics in the book that we haven't covered in class, I won't ask you about it. But there, are, if there are topics in the book that extend what we covered in class, then I'll feel free to talk about it and to ask you about it. So, for example, if we're talking about sampling and they talk some about some things uh, that about sampling that I didn't, I'll feel free to kind of ask you about those things or assume you know those things. But if they talk about something that we haven't talked about, then I would assume you know. Questions about the exam? All right, well, if you need extra time or anything like that, arrange it with student services first because, you know, a class comes in as soon as we're done. So, you know, we can't extend that, that time in here. Um, but it will be during class time. Uh, assignment three, um, I'll give you uh, the assignment three probably to, to today or tomorrow. Um, we, we have to discuss in class the topic we want to focus on for the next for the rest, rest of the semester. So that's what we'll do this morning. Um, and then I'll give it to you. It's due on the 26th. So it's due after the midterm. So you have plenty of time to do it. And it's not that intensive. It just means, you know, what it basically does is it sort of says to go through into um, you know, kind of look at some videos online and then to, um, based on the videos online, I mean, then do some literature searches and just give me some articles that you find. But I'll go through more. Okay, questions about that? Oh, this is not right. Due date is not October 12th. I changed the due date, sorry. Mm 
ما سمعتش Okay. So what we want to do today, and then what we're going to do, you know, after we uh, get back from the midterm, um, is go through and to basically pick a topic that we want to look at um, with a survey. Um, and the idea being is that we'll develop the survey, we'll give it out to people, we'll enter the data from the survey, kind of do some analysis of it, um, and then we'll, you know, based upon that, then I'll, you know, that will be kind of a, how we'll. we'll I'll show you sort of the, the things you do with survey data once you get it, but we need a topic. Um, so I could, you know, I can choose one randomly, but I thought you might have ideas about things that you want to look at. Um, and so the only, you know, the only kind of a, a caveats I'd say is that one, it's got to be a cross-sectional survey. That would, and we'll talk about what a cross-sectional survey is in a second. But basically, what that means is that it's got to be something that we ask about, like ask people about now. So. Not something where we follow people up, not something where we have two different conditions and we try different things. It's just a survey of people. So it's got to be a survey. It's got to deal with something that that people on campus would know about, because you know we're going to be giving it to ourselves and to you know, friends on campus. So it's got to be something where where you know that's relevant to people on campus. Um, it can be their attitudes towards something. It can be something about like a service on campus. So I think uh, um, last year when I uh, when I taught this class, they did it on the student health center. They basically looked at people's experiences with the student health center. Um, so it's gotta be something that sort of deals with things that either a service that's on class or, you know, attitudes that people would have about something, you know, their views on such, something like that, that, that we can ask people about that they'll be somewhat familiar with, okay? So, given that, why don't you break into groups and first off, you know, trying to come up with, all right, so what is the question? What's the topic that we want to look at, all right? What's the general topic at this point? So, give you five minutes. So, break into groups and come up with what it is it that you would like, what's the the types of, of topic that you would like to do. And if you're sitting by yourself, join in the group. Nat, can be four, can be however many you want. You're going to have to join in someplace. Or Tamara, you have to join in. You'll need to, if you're in a group, Scrunch together. We're doing group things, so good news, you now the group. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
something physical or something with you know some type of general health issue than people have. Yeah. Okay, when you come up with an idea, so come up with an idea, you have to choose at least one and then identify someone in your group who's going to tell what the idea is because I'm going to write it on the board. So you have two minutes. You have your idea? You have your idea? Got your idea? Got your idea? Idea? All right, we're ready. Okay, let's start with what's your idea? Say it again. Safe sex practices among Polynesians. Say it louder. We can have as many. Okay, so quality of sleep, you know, so just sleep in general. Okay, sleep and academic performance. So let's see that. And we also said another call for you, like, when you go to school. Okay. Like, that's okay. Well, that's okay. I mean, if that's when you're doing it as well. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Nice. Uh -huh. So, like, the stress of our, um, maybe that's like, what do you think? Okay, so relationship. The student stress, yeah, you have to stress on that. Okay, so stress. So just general anxiety, or like during pregnancy, you think anxiety is general. Okay. But impact of uh, anxiety uh, and academic performance, or just how? Oh, in general. Okay. You get everyone? Okay. So let's vote. How many would like to do? You know, because what we're going to do is that we're going to go through and do a uh, you know develop a survey, develop a survey. It's going to look up the literature for it. So this is kind of what we're going to do <laughs> for the next six weeks. So it should be something that you're kind of interested in. Um, so given that, let's do a vote. How many would like to do this one? Raise your hand. Not even the original group. This is zero. Okay. How many would like to do? This one, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. How many would like to do more? We'll put these two together. How many would like to do one of these? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Well, we could split it. You, we could do two different ones. So we could do, you know, one group does anxiety and the other one does sleep and academic performance. what do you think? For those people in this group, those people who did, said this one, yeah. would you be willing to do that one? Or do you really want to do, anyone really want to do uh, anxiety that I can see? Okay, so sleep it is. Um, so sleep and academic performance, you originally came up with the idea. So can you explain a little bit more about what you're thinking?
shows the impact of state on on academic performance just again. Okay. Um, so the next step is now come up with a research question. So you think about this in terms of now you're doing something that's gonna you're gonna test. And so the way to think about it is like, well, you know, are there two different groups that you would might say, you know, like high sleep people versus low sleep people? Or are there groups that you would think are like, you know, high anxiety people lead to sleep, lead to something like that? But some type of, of research question where whereby we're gonna have, you know, the factor one leads to factor two. And factor one is that the independent or dependent? Independent. Right? That's your independent variable. And this one is going to be your dependent variable. And you, know, you can have different research questions. So it's not like everyone has to do the same one. So now in your group, talk about what is it about sleep and academic performance that might be interesting to look at. And, and think about it in terms of this. Um, your factor one leads to your factor two. So you probably should join in a group. You probably should join in a group. You're ready. I know. You ready? No. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Okay. Join a group. From back there. Okay. That's a that's a three level group. So I don't care. Why don't you two why don't you three split into one group and you four go into the second group? Okay, we ready? Okay. So let's see, who wants to start? How about what's your research question? So that's fine. So what's the impact So you have you have sleep. Leads to lower test scores. I got. Okay, get that one. So, so what would be your your hypothesis? Um, yeah. 
Let's see. We have the several points of only one again. I mean, you know, you can do it that way, but because you could see this sort of say C from each piece, but if, if there's some peak level of C that we don't have. Yeah, yeah, that one was. Yeah. Um, and we could keep non lots of and other people say that it's on north, you know, they have. So how do you how do you and you just want to keep looking at the the you can keep with the hypothesis that the more suit you get, the better you trust it. Period. Okay, so so it's the same thing as this. Sleep leads to test scores. Anyone have anything different than sleep leads to test scores? Yeah, what's your? Oh, we kind of live in the end of the day. Yeah. We're talking about an increase in sleep, I mean, a decrease in anxiety. Yeah. Increase in sleep leads to decrease in anxiety. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, sleep, anxiety. So. Close. And anyone else have a different one? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like high uh, academic stress is the problem. Okay. Academic stress is the other. So you're saying lower test scores leads to sleep. Is that a problem? That here we have sleep leading the lower test scores. And here we have Lord Pesco as we would see. Well, I'll answer my own question. No, it's not a problem. It does mean, though, that there's probably something else going on here, and that you probably are, there's some type of time relationship that you're thinking about. Right? So you think that, that like, let's say if you're, you know, here's a, August 24th, and then you have sleep, which is positive or negative. So, so people that are sleeping enough, enough are not sleeping enough. And so if they're not sleeping enough, then that might lead to anxiety. Or it might lead to um, you know, poor test scores. So think of it, a way to think about this is the truth. So we'll do it, I'll do it more easily. So here's August 24th when the when the semester starts, right? So you can have here's people, if you measure their sleep, they either get good sleep or they get bad sleep, right? And then if they get good sleep, they either get you know good initial test scores or not good. Here really. Not and then that affects their sleep. Positive. And so sleep in here we are not October first. October third. Positive and negative. Positive. And then their sleep then, you know, affects their anxiety. Anxiety slash. You know, anxiety was like plus scores, right? Like that. So you can think about this that you know there's like a time element that's going to So you're saying you're saying, well, lower test scores means that people are more likely to have bad sleep than people with high test scores are going to have better sleep. So you're kind of focusing on this comparison then, right? Or this relationship. Right? And you were, were focusing more upon this relationship that good sleep leads to higher test scores rather than lower test scores. Right? So that's why you know both of them can be can be true. I mean, I mean both of can be valid type of research questions to look at. It's just that you're it's a there's a you know a time relationship here that goes along with it. Okay. So is that clear then? All right.
So essentially what we'll, so we'll, we'll stick with this basic idea is that somehow sleep is related to test scores, but also test scores is related to sleep and that anxiety fits in there someplace. And so the, the next step, you know, once you've done this kind of initial kind of just thinking about it, the next step is to go see what the literature says. So, you know, in your assignment three then, your assignment three will basically to go through, and first off is to watch, to, to go online to watch, there's some videos here. So they go watch these videos. Um, and then just uh, um, go through and, and do a, a simple lip search that gives me, you know, some references that would be good references that for us all to share that would on this topic. So like, if you're to think of search terms you might use for this, what are you, some search terms you might use? I mean, first off, who is, anyone used Google Scholar before? Right, so you all know how to use basic Google Scholar. So you all know about how to put search terms in, right, to, to search for something. So what might be some search terms that you would use for this? I'll give you the first one, sleep. Sleep might be one. Like if you just use that one, well, we could do it. I'll put in, I'll go to Google Scholar. Scholar. Go to Google Scholar up and sleep. So, you know, you're going to find lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of articles on sleep. So that's why you probably need to, to narrow it down more. So sleep and what? Academic performance. How about college students? Okay. Sleep multi-predictor approach. And so you notice you're gonna get a lot of things here. So the first thing I usually look for is the view article to see if I can find like here, a systematic review to find something. So review articles are good because like, especially in a topic like this, where, you know, you're gonna find there's lots of different papers on, on sleep and, ac and anxiety and academic, um, academic performance. So the thing to do is to find a good review article. And then from there, you can start refining what it is that you're interested in. Because I think what you're gonna find is that there's a lot, you know, just within this basic type of, of, of framework here, there's a lot of different type of, uh, of, uh, of questions that you could ask and, and angles you can take. Good? So not all of you then, at the end of this, you know, this search process will have the same kind of references because part of what you're gonna do is you're gonna be identifying what is the specific thing that you are kind of interested in from that. So what we'll do is we'll you know, kind of go through this process of do this for assignment three, and then I'll compile all your references and then, but then we'll develop a questionnaire that's based upon you know, that you can ask people about academic performance and sleep. Good? Okay, so once you, you know, you can see is that once you have something like this, right, where it's a fairly, you're thinking, oh, I've got to you know, kind of find the type of issue in terms of what I'm looking, you know, what my, my problem is, you know, what, what the relationship is between sleep and academic performance. And so then you've got to figure out, well, what kind of, you know, what kind of uh, design can you use to kind of get at these issues? That's, that's that what you know what should your survey kind of look for um and so that's where you get into different type of, of designs of, it, of experiments you know of how you set your survey um for example you could set it up where you could find people who have sleep problems and then look at their academic performance and find people who don't have sleep problems and look at their academic performance you could do a general type of study you know where you just ask people about their academic performance in their sleep you could do a a, a follow-up study where you find people at the beginning of the semester and follow them up through time. So there are lots of different ways you could you could do an experiment where you buy you, you know, you choose half the people and say, good news, you're not going to get any sleep. And you stand outside their 
their room at night, ringing a bell to keep them from sleeping. And another group that you, know, you make sure that they have a very, very quiet area so they can sleep. So you could do an experiment for it. So there's different ways to set it up. And, and each of the different kind of ways that you could do it have their own pros and cons. And so there's no kind of right way or wrong way to do it. But what it is that the way you choose is going to have either, you know, it's going to have strengths and it's going to have weaknesses. And so um, and it's not just kind of the, you know, what's the best type of, of, of design to use. Um, that's your only consideration. That oftentimes when you do some type of research, you also have to think about, you know, how much money you have to basically do this, how much time you have. Like if you wanted to look at, at this relationship, you might think, okay, so we're going to start surveying people on October, you know, August 24th, and we're going to finish in December, right? So you basically have three months to follow up people. So you may not have that. Like you may be, you may, all you may have is just like to do enough time and effort to do a single survey. So, so there are other kind of considerations that go into it. Okay, basic type designs. Um, there are two different categories. So descriptive and explanatory. So descriptive, um, you, you'll actually see this a lot when people go through and they start to, to do research is that when they come up with the research questions, they're kind of just descriptive research questions, meaning is that they're things like, you know, you know how many people like baseball? Something for which it's not really a research question, but you're just, you know, you're just describing what the what the population looks like. The more explanatory ones are where you try to you usually have some type of theory or some type of idea to explain who might like baseball versus who might not like baseball. So once you, if all you're doing is just you're just describing the basics of like what you know the, of the population, you're doing descriptive study. If you're doing something that's looking at the um, at trying to explain who is it that likes one thing or another thing, or what's different in different groups, then you're into an explanatory study. If you kind of think about the different types of, of research that we do in health, is that, for example, I think I said at the beginning that identifying needs is what epidemiology typically does. So a lot of epidemiology is descriptive because they're just reporting, you know, how much heart, heart disease is there in the population or What's the level of a of, um, of you know the number of of suicide attempts by youth? Things like that. Those are all descriptive studies. Um, they also oftentimes do explanatory studies too in epidemiology. So when they start to add in like what's the risk factors? So whenever you see risk factors in there, then they're they're doing explanatory study. You know, um, most of what kind of is, is done within kind of what's you know like a when we're looking at the healthcare service, most of that is going to be um, evaluation type work. And evaluation type work is usually not descriptive per se, because when you evaluate, you're using comparing something to something else. So you're saying like, you know, there are this number of, of medical errors and you know, compared to this type of, of population, we have this number of medical errors. So it tends to be more explanatory. And then when you get in the randomized controlled trials, that's where you're really doing the explanatory because you're trying to figure out, does this factor kind of influence something? You know, does this factor have an influence or not? All right, descriptive studies um, are, you know, a pure descriptive study. Uh, it's, it's usually kind of rare that it's interesting enough on its own because to be a real interesting descriptive study, it's gotta be something whereby people you know, where there's some, uh, some reason for why you're looking at it. So this comes up a lot with, um, like with graduate students when they're putting, put together proposals um, and they say, well, I want to compare, you know, uh, I want to compare um, obesity rates between the San Joaquin Valley and LA, let's say. And so, you know, you might think, oh, okay. So, you know, a good, a, a good topic to start with and why do you want to do it? And they say, well, just because, you know, I think the Valley is going to have different rates. That's a descriptive study. It doesn't explain why the valley might have different rates. To explain why the valley has different rates, then you have to get into things like, oh, maybe people have less access to food, you know, the healthy food, or maybe it's lower incomes or whatever it's going to be. Um, but once you start to do that, go into that type of level, now you're talking about explanatory type things. So the number of studies that are actually interesting on just descriptive is actually pretty small. And it has, it's usually things that are new like, I don't know, dating on, on uh, 
um, the new X rather than what well, used to be Twitter. So if you're wondering how dating, you know, how do people still meet others and date based upon their interactions on X and who's doing this, is that that's something for which it's new. So you could do a descriptive study on that because you know, no one's done it before. All right, so once we get into then more explanatory studies, then there are three basic types or four basic types that we'll look at, right? So you have observational studies. Observational studies means case control, um, cross-sectional, and follow-up. What differs between all these different types of studies is essentially when, you know, the, the timelines that you're using. So case controls, what you're doing is that you begin by identifying people with an outcome, and then you look to see what their past behavior is to predict whether or not they have a risk factor. So the idea is that, you know, it's good for, for when you're looking for certain type of conditions, when you want to compare, when you know what you want to compare. And so what you're doing is you find people who have a condition and then you're looking to see what can predict it. So in this case here, if you do a case control step for this, what would you do? Who, what are the cases that you care about? When I say cases with the outcome, what's the outcome? What's the, is the outcome the independent or dependent variable? Dependent, right? So in this case, what's going to, which dependent variable should we pick? Because we have two, we have a choice, right? We can either use sleep as the independent variable and test scores as the dependent variable, or we can use, um, Test scores as the independent variable, or independent variable, and sleep as the dependent. So, let's do it first with uh, with sleep as the independent variable and test scores as the dependent variable. So, who would we find? Who would be our cases that we want to find? Students with low test scores and students with high test scores, right? So you're going to find students with low test scores and students with high test scores. And then what are the risk factors that you're going to ask about? Sleep. Sleep and other things too. Like what else determines test scores besides sleep? Hours that you study? Mm -hmm. What else? Yeah. Well, you have to work, you know, outside, outside job. I don't know. Um, What's that? Yeah, okay. Amount of time that you have to basically dedicate to that. So so you could, you know, you're thinking then about, well, so there's like some finite number of time that people have. And so, you know, if you're going by the assumption that the more time you study, the better your test scores are, and that sleep is going to be one fact, one kind of lump of time, but then another lump of time is going to be working, another lump of time is going to be family considerations, whether you have children or what else, right? You can just sort of think about lumping up your time. So you're, in this case, then, you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, you'd have to measure each of those different things. Right? So what if you did it the other way? What if you did, um, so that's the case where you're looking at, does, does sleep impact test scores? How about if you want to do it the other way? What group, what's the group that you should find? So you, so your dependent variable. I mean, your the, the the dependent variable. This case is sleep, right? So you want to find sleep. So you're going to find people who sleep a lot and those who don't sleep a lot. And then what you're looking at for your risk factors is test scores. Now, which like if I were to do it right now, how many people have taken midterms right now already? Okay. If I were to do it right now and I were to find people who have slept a lot and haven't slept a lot. And then would I look at your future midterm scores or your past midterm scores? Past midterm scores, right? Because you're, you're saying that, that the causal relationship goes, anxiety leads to, the test anxiety leads to poor sleep, right? So that means that how you did, that you would expect that people who did poorly on the last round of midterms are going to be sleeping less than people who did 
well in the last round of midterms. Is that right? Okay, that's a case control. So case controls are really good when you are really good when you uh, uh, when you um, have a rare condition. It's like if, if you're doing something where what you care about is not necessarily just people who uh, you know who um, sleep a lot, but maybe you are looking at people who only get three hours sleep a night, something like that. Versus, um, and so you want some type of rare condition, or like the example I was giving is that, in this one is um, is lead intake. So like let's say if we did it with lead, lead intake and seizures, right? So you're interested in does lead intake do does is there a relationship between lead intake in children and seizures? So if you were to do a case control study of that, what would be your dependent and independent variable. You have lead intake in children, right? Or in seizures. So what's the independent variable? What's the dependent variable? Say letter. Is the independent variable. Right, because lead intake leads to seizures, right? Factor one, lead intake leads to factor two seizures. Seizures did not lead to lead intake. Okay. So if you were to do this then, who would you find then as your cases? Seizures, children with seizures, right? You'd find children with seizures. And so where could you find children with seizures? Yeah, so for these types of things where it's a rare event, right? Because most kids don't have seizures. Where it's a rare event, you know, what you do is you go down and you, you know, like the hospital and you say, I'd like to sign up, you know, parents who come in with children under five years old who've had seizures, I'd like to go ahead and, and see if they can be part of the study. So you get that group of, of kids, and then you look at their characteristics of that, of that group. And then what you do is you try to find a similar type of sample of people with, who don't have seizures. Now, what's it mean to have a similar type of sample? Like what, what are the factors that you think lead to lead in pain among children? Uh huh. So I think the time frame depends on how much exposure to pink, um, and lead in the past. Yeah. So, uh, here and uh -huh. environment. Yeah. So you know, one is is kind of just the like thermometers had thermometers have lead in. Um, paint is usually one of the big areas where, where people get lead, kids get lead exposure. Who tends to live in houses with lead paint? Lower income or people back east. You know, when when we lived back east in Boston, our we were first house, our kids, you know, had because ever all the kids get tested for lead back then. And the first test that they do for lead is that our kids came back as high as lead and on lead. And we were told. We were told by the landlady, lady, oh no, there's no lead in here. And we said, well, how'd you determine there was no lead in there? She said, oh, I have a friend with a Geiger counter who came through and said there was no lead. And I thought, Geiger counter? I don't think a Geiger counter is good for lead. And sure enough, it had lead paint in it. And, and you know, the kids were young at that point and they do things like lick the walls and such like that. When you're, you know, so kids do. Um, so that they're getting lead intake from, from that. So it tends to be feel older houses, you know, we didn't have much money. So people who live in poorer houses, et cetera, is what, what uh, you know, characteristics of people who get, um, who get lead intake. So if you, you know, if you want to figure out whether to relate to seizures, then what you do is you pick a group that's similar to that, but who haven't had seizures. So in terms of low income, lives in the Northeast, all these other characteristics, you, you get them to match as, as much as possible. But the only thing that's different is that this group has a seizure and this group doesn't have seizures. And then what you do is you look to see about lead exposure. Have the, has this bit group been exposed to lead and has this group not been exposed to lead? All right. Okay. Um, actually, we're going to stop there for the day because I have to go off and give a talk. So on farm worker health, 
So I could give you, if you want to join the talk on farm work health, you're more than welcome to. Um, but why don't we stop there for the day and then uh, uh, we'll start up here on Thursday. Yeah? The lectures in the they are distributed in the midterms are for it's for essentially since the semester started until next week. Okay.